Welcome to Beyond the Badge, presented by the Oshkosh Police Department. Welcome to this edition of Beyond the Badge. I'm Joe Nichols. On today's show, we'll be talking with Sergeant Todd Rogge about the Project Lifesaver program, how the equipment is used, and how someone can enroll in this program. Later in the show, we will watch the media event that was held at the Oshkosh Police Department for the program. We welcome all of you listening to us on 101.9 Oshkosh FM, and those of you watching us on GovTV. Sergeant Rogge, Thank you very much for coming on today's show. Happy to be here, Joe. Great. And uh, this isn't your first time on the show. No, it's so, not. But if you'd just like to remind everyone a little bit about yourself. Hey, uh, I've been with the Oshkosh Police Department for 23 years. I've been the sergeant of training for the last eight and a half. Uh, and I'm also the project uh, administrator for Project Lifesaver. Fantastic. Well, once again, thank you for coming on today's show. Uh, tell us, what is Project Lifesaver? Project Lifesaver is a radio locating program for people with wandering risks, those that are um, diagnosed with dementia, autism, Alzheimer's, uh, Down syndrome, anything that would have a wandering risk as a facet of that diagnosis. Very good. And how did Project Lifesaver come into existence? It was actually started in Virginia by the 43rd Virginia Search and Rescue. They were having a lot of searches, many of them failed searches for people with uh, Alzheimer's. And they were looking for a system that was reliable that could help them locate somebody who wandered off and locate them quickly. Uh, and they, they kind of learned that the conservation wardens have been do, using this same kind of locating system for uh, tracking animal movement in the wild. Oh, wow. To study animal populations, deer and wild wolves and things like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So why is this program so important to our community? We do have a number of individuals in our community that we've already identified that have a wandering risk. And when they wander, it can be very dangerous. Uh, I'll give you a good, good example. Uh, a child with autism, oftentimes they're attracted to water. And if they get to water, they don't have oftentimes an understanding of the dangers associated with it. And, and sometimes they drown. So the sooner that they're reported missing, the sooner we can deploy the tracking or the, the locating equipment, and the sooner we can recover them or return them home. That's the mission of Project Lifesaver is bringing our loved ones home. Absolutely. And so now who is eligible for using this program? Uh, as I mentioned before, anybody who has a diagnosis that involves a risk of wandering, uh, again, dementia, Alzheimer's, autism, Down syndrome, any of those are associated cognitive disorders. Very good. Very good. I heard that the Community Foundation put forth a great effort to get this program started. Tell us a little bit about that. To say that they put forth a great effort is almost underselling it. They uh, single-handedly made the initiation of this program possible with a generous donation of funds. Without that support, we wouldn't have been able to afford uh, the startup costs of this program itself. All right. And I, I know that they, they purchased some of the equipment, and we see some of that equipment here on the table. Uh, you know, can you tell us a little bit about what this equipment is? Certainly. It all starts right here with the transmitter. The transmitter has a wafer battery in it. This is just a radio frequency transmitter. Each transmitter has a unique frequency that is assigned only to that client. And it's my job as the program administrator to make sure that I don't place any of those frequencies close enough together in variable so that they could interfere or I could pick up the wrong one. Okay. Uh, the client wears this on a band around either their wrist or their ankle. If they go wandering, we deploy with what we call a receiver, which is this. We turn it on, we dial into the frequency specifically assigned to this transmitter, and if we're within three quarters of a mile to a mile, we'll pick up the tone. It sounds like a chirp. We hear that chirp, the strength and clarity of it will tell us which direction it is, so it leads us right to them. Very good. We awesome. also have a, I'm sorry, we also have a home tester. Uh, the caregiver for the client would test this every day. Basically, they hold it either on or near it, and it gives you a, a blinking red light. 
the red light's blinking, that means that these, this transmitter is putting out a strong signal. That's excellent, excellent. So a feel safe system. Correct, basically. make sure that the battery stays good. If anything ever happens, if the battery dies, we go in home once a month and replace the battery. The batteries are usually good for about 45 to 60 days, but we go in every 30 days and replace them to, to make sure that they're working. Very good. And if anything ha happens with the equipment, all the caregiver has to do is call us and, and we'll come in home and diagnose it, replace it, do whatever we have to do to get it back up and running. Very good. Very good. A couple other pieces of equipment out here. Um, you know, I know that there's some specialized training that officers have to go through. Is Correct. this the, the equipment that they're actually using? It is. They're using the actual equipment that they, they would be using on an electronic search. All right. uh, we also have what's called an omni antenna. This is omnidirectional. We put this on top of the car, hook it up to the receiver, and this will get us within a quarter of a mile. If we hear the signal, Using this antenna, that means we're within a quarter of a mile, and then we get out, rehook this one, that gets us directional. Oh wow, wow! So it is a great system. It is. I mean, you're going to be able to find people quickly. Yes. All right. With the proper training, uh, what is the average time for sign, finding someone that may have wandered? Average search times nationally have been right around 30 minutes. Uh, I, having performed a number of trainings now in house for our people. Uh, our average search time has been actually much shorter than that, between 10 and 15 minutes. And that's with giving our role players a half an hour head start. Wow, that's excellent. That's a great program. All right. And uh, so are there other jurisdictions in the area right now that are utilizing the same equipment? Right now, the only other jurisdiction in the area is actually the uh, Grand Chute Fire Department. They are the full member agency, and I believe they brought on the Grand Chute Police Department as an associate member. Okay. And I, I know that you had talked uh, recently about possibly the city of Menasha? Correct. They had indicated an interest in becoming an associate member along with us, which would mean that we could supply the training and equipment to the Menasha Police Department so that they could be applying these transmitters to clients in their community. Wow. Well, that's great. And if an Oshkosh family, uh, let's say that they're interested in the program, how would they go about uh, getting the program to their loved one? Well, what they would uh, need to do is contact me directly. Uh, we'll have my number in just a moment. Uh, they'd contact me directly, either by email or by phone. Uh, and I would set up an appointment with them to deliver some paperwork that would need to be filled out in advance. Uh, once every th all the paperwork is completed, uh, then I go in home and install the transmitter, uh, and they're in the program. Fantastic. What is the cost to the program? There's a one-time purchase fee of $300 for the transmitter. That's just to cover the cost of the unit. Um, then there's a $25 annual maintenance fee that covers the cost of bands and batteries because every time we go in home, we have to cut the band off, open the unit up, take the battery out, put a new battery in and attach a new band. Okay. So that's a one-time $300 cost and $25 a year to maintain it. Fantastic. Now, if someone uh, had more questions uh, about the program or maybe wanted to see it, uh, actually how it works, uh, where could they go or who could they call? They could contact me directly. My phone number in my office is 920-236-5757, or they could go on our website at oshkoshpd.com slash Project Lifesaver. We'll have our bro uh, brochure that they can look through. Uh, they could also check uh, projectlifesaver.org uh, that has more of a generalized national um, set up to it. Very good. Well, great program, Sergeant Raghi, and thank you so much for coming on today's show. Pleasure to be here. Excellent. And we will be right back after this short break. In the event of a big emergency and, and I'm at work, my daughter's uh, school is, is two blocks away. That would be a very convenient meeting place for all of us. We'd uh, meet up at his parents' house. A meeting place? Not really. Um, my husband would definitely pick up the girls from school. I would want to make sure that she is has the girls or is on her way to get the girls. I know that there's a plan, but I don't know what the plan is. Welcome back to Beyond the Badge. And right now we're going to go to the media event uh, that took place back in April. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Chief Dean Smith. I'd like to thank each of you for being here today as we here at the Oshkosh Police Department go live with a project that we've been working on for several months to implement. Through a partnership with the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation, the Oshkosh Police Department is proud to announce our participation in Project Lifesaver. Project Lifesaver is a program designed to help public safety proactively search for and locate missing persons suffering from Alzheimer's, dementia, and other conditions uh, such as autism. 
The startup and implementation costs were fully funded by the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation and I would like to thank the foundation and specifically Carlene Grabner who's, who's standing behind you who you can speak with later on who's here today for graciously helping the community with this. Project Lifesaver began in Hampton Roads, Virginia where I'm from and has been incredibly successful in locating lost individuals in the worst time of need. It's been a goal of mine to bring this program to Oshkosh since coming here over a year ago as Chief of Police. This passion comes from the knowledge of our senior community here in Oshkosh and from personal experience in Virginia. We're sad that we lost an Alzheimer's patient who was later found deceased in a ditch. I firmly believe that if we had this technology at that time in Virginia, she would not have died. Here in Oshkosh, just a few months ago, a tragedy was averted when a senior citizen suffering from dementia wandered from home and by pure coincidence was found on the railroad tracks by a passerby. She was kneeling down on the tracks. We hope to avoid any tragedies such as this in the future. I've always believed that the success of any initiative will be driven by someone who has a passion for that initiative. To that end, I have asked Sergeant Todd Raggi to lead this program for us. Sergeant Raggi is infinitely aware of the dangers facing families who are caring for family members who are impacted by these challenges. He has a son who suffers from autism. I'd like Sergeant Raggi to come forward to explain more about the program for you. Sergeant Raggi. Thank you, Chief. A six-year-old autistic child goes missing while walking their puppy. An 80-year-old woman with Alzheimer's walks away while the family eats dinner at Thanksgiving. These stories go on and on. Over 5 million people in the United States have Alzheimer's and approximately one child in every 68 will be born with autism. These numbers are expected to skyrocket and well over 50 percent of these people will wander. They won't know to ask for help. They won't speak out. Many of them are nonverbal. They will find themselves in critical emergencies. They're unaware of their situation. Nearly half of them will die and many can become injured or fall victim to predators. These risks rise after 9 to 12 hours, and at 24 hours, the risk of recovery becomes about 50 percent. The number of families, people, and communities experiencing this risk will grow dramatically in the next two years. If you're not yet touched in some way by Alzheimer's, autism, or another cognitive disorder, chances are you will be within the next several years. You will find it among your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, their families, and perhaps within your own family. The citizens of Oshkosh can rest assured knowing that there's a program available to help them handle these frightening situations. That program is Project Lifesaver. Project Lifesaver is an innovative rapid response program designed to aid victims and families suffering from Alzheimer's and other related disorders such as autism and Down syndrome. Project Lifesaver deploys specially trained teams with the most reliable technology available to, to quickly locate and return wandering adults and children to their families and caregivers. Project Lifesaver relies on radio technology and specially trained search and rescue teams. Clients that enroll, are enrolled in Project Lifesaver program wear a personalized wristband that emits an inaudible tracking signal. When a caregiver notifies the Oshkosh Police Department that a person is missing, search and rescue team responds to the wanderer's area and starts searching with the mobile locator tracking equipment. Search times have been reduced from hours and days to minutes. The average recovery time is 30 minutes. In over 3,200 searches involving Project Lifesaver equipment, there have been no failures, no significant injuries or deaths. The Project Lifesaver bracelet is more than just a passive ID bracelet. It's a one ounce battery operated wrist transmitter emitting an automatic tracking signal every second, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. This signal can be tracked on the ground or in the air, and as each transmitter has a unique frequency, the Oshkosh Police Department Lifesaver Team, Project Lifesaver Team, positively locates and identifies the person who is wearing that particular bracelet and returns them to their home or to the care facility from which they wandered. I'm proud today to announce that the Oshkosh Police Department Project Lifesaver begins. We join the Grand Chute Fire Department in the mission of bringing your loved ones home and encourage anybody who is interested in the program to check out our website or call me as the pro uh, program administrator at 920-236-5757. 5757. We would also, as the Oshkosh Police Department Project Lifesaver Team, encourage every other jurisdiction to join this team. At this point, I'll open it up for any questions that anybody might have. <coughs> yes? 
You can call me as, as the program administrator. Uh, I'm the sergeant of training. Uh, my number is 920-236-5757. How this would be implemented method? Do you have officers who are trained, uh, certain officers, or are they all going to be trained? We will be training a certain number of officers as electronic search specialists. In the event that we have a client that goes missing, the caregiver would call us. We would deploy our teams and the equipment to the scene of where they were last seen, and they would begin searching at that, at that point. Yes. Uh, as Chief Smith uh, said before, the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation was very generous in helping us start this program. The cost to the caregiver would be $300. It's a one-time fee for the transmitter. That's the actual cost for purchase for us. That helps us sustain the program. There would also be a $25 annual maintenance fee. That means it takes care of the cost of bands and batteries for us to come in. We come in home once a month and change out the battery, change out the band, inspect the actual transmitter to make sure that it's operating properly. Because if it's not operating properly, it doesn't do us any good. We need to have this, this piece of equipment on the client and it needs to be operating. Uh, to that end, we also give the caregiver a tester so that they can test the battery every day to make sure that it's functioning. Is this just going to be uh, limited to the people of Oshkosh or are you going to at this point, it is just the citizens of Oshkosh, uh, and that's why we're encouraging every jurisdiction to, to become members of this program because let's say that we had uh, Winnebago County Sheriff's Department as, on, as a co-member. If they had the equipment as well and we had somebody that wandered out of the city or they had somebody that wandered into the city, all we would have to do is provide them the frequency or they provide us the frequency. We dial it in and we can help find theirs or they can help find ours. That's the importance of having it valley-wide. If everybody in the, in the Fox River Valley had this program, if we had somebody go wandering, we could just share the frequency with every other jurisdiction in the area, and we all go on one massive search. Do you have any stats on, just for Oshkosh at least, we all get these silver alerts. Um, how, I, mean, I guess how much of a need has it been, in, or are you anticipating? There's definitely a need. I don't have statistics to provide you, but I can tell you as far as autism is concerned, the Fox River Valley in Wisconsin has one of the largest populations of autistic children in the country. And it's partially because of the amount of autism services that are offered here uh, within the valley. That speaks to the need for this type of, of program. Can you be more specifically how many officers are going to be on the team? My hope is to have 40 to 50 officers trained as electronic search specialists. And they would have to recertify every two years. There are three of us that are trained as electronic search specialist instructors that will be training the rest of, of those members. Uh, it's important for us to have people in place that uh, are able to be deployed immediately because you get that golden hour where the, a person can walk about four miles an hour, the average person, and if they get too far, they get outside the range of the equipment. <clears throat> but I'll explain uh, in a little bit how this equipment works and how we can use it functionally to find people that even may have walked out of range. Uh, and it can, it can work very effectively. And we've done some exercises and we've had very good success with uh, even giving 15, 20 minutes lag time, the search time has taken us right around 10 minutes to recover. So it's very, very quick, it's very accurate. And where GPS will get you within yards, this will get you within inches. It's very, very specific. And we are going to run a kind of a missing person scenario here briefly. It's not going to take long. It's meant to be about a five, about a five minute search, just to give you an idea how we use the equipment to locate somebody who's gone missing. And then one more thing, I know you said that the community foundation is really funded this, but how much money are we talking here? How much did they fund it? Yeah, how much was the, is the cost of the program? The cost of the program to start up was about $7,000. And that left us some leftover funds that I was able to buy an, an additional receiver, which is important. Because if you know anything about uh, triangulating signals, you can't do it with less than three. So you've got to have that extra one. And that allowed us to purchase that extra receiver, which really enhances our ability to find that, that transmitter. All right, if there are no other questions, I'm going to have one of my CSOs come up. I'm actually going to put the bracelet on him and send him out, uh, give him about a five-minute head start, and then we're going to go mobile. So if you want to walk with one of our searchers, uh, walk with me and we'll talk through it as, as we go out and you can see how the signals picked up. Uh, I'm going to have you step right over here if you would, Josh. Again, this is the actual transmitter and the bracelet. Now there are different color casings that you might see. Uh, there are also different color bands that you might see. What we would do is inside there's a specific frequency number and that's you can see on the transmitter over here. 
we would go in home, I would custom measure this so it's the right size. We put it on the client. Snap it on here. There we go. So I'll have bracelets on him. I would cut this tag end off before I put it on him so I'm not taking a pair of scissors near his wrist. And then let's say he goes wandering. So I'm going to have you go wandering. Right. Go ahead. And I'm going to give him about a five minute head start. <clears throat> I've told him, I haven't told him where to go pre precisely. I haven't given him a specific spot. I've just said walk out into the parking lot and try not to be found. We're going to deploy in about five minutes with the receivers and go find him. Uh, it doesn't take much. Uh, to f it really doesn't take much to find them once you understand what you're looking for and understand how to use the equipment. The equipment is, the, the use of this is kind of an art form more than, a, than a, uh, something I can instruct. You have to go out and do it. Uh, and there are, right now are three of us trained to do it. Uh, I'm actually running some training for more of our officers in a couple weeks to get more people up to speed on how to run this equipment. So we'll give him about five minutes head start and we'll go get him. Go get him, Houdini. There we go. It's not, it's not, like I said, it's not hard. The nice thing with this equipment is, it, I mentioned it, if we had somebody that went beyond, this has a, a one mile range on the ground, about five to seven miles in the air. If we had somebody get outside that one mile range, the easiest way for us to use this equipment is to hook what's called an omni antenna up to it, put it on top of a car and go mobile. The omni antenna will tell me what, if I get a chirp, if I get that little sound, and I don't know if I'll get it in here. No, he's too far gone right uh, If I get a chirp, and you'll hear what it sounds like as we get up, up in the parking lot. If I get a chirp on this, that means I'm within a quarter of a mile of that signal. This is non-directional. It just, just tells me I'm within a quarter of a mile. But if I'm within a quarter of a mile and I pull this out, this gets me within a mile. And this is directional. So the idea is to use this to find the signal and then hook it up to this and really find locate. That's, basic, that's a basic model of how we would work the program and how we handle electronic searches. But again, if we can recover clients within minutes instead of hours, that's huge in their, in their survival. And if you think about a day like today when it's cold outside, it's windy, uh, we're not going to be outside for very long, but think about somebody who's got Alzheimer's dementia that wanders away in weather like this. It doesn't take long to become hypothermic and they don't even realize it. Same thing with children with autism. They don't realize the dangers of the cold. So. The, the importance of finding somebody quickly in weather like this uh, can't be overstated. It's not a charity. It's more than a charity. It's about helping people we live with. It's about being the type of person that the six-year-old version of ourselves wanted us to be. It's about community and looking out for one another. It's about money, yes, but it's so much more than money. It's about friendship and common values. It's about opening doors when others are slammed shut. It's about giving kids a place to be kids and growing up knowing they live in a community that cares about them. It's about making sure that everyone gets to see the dentist because we want to make sure that they have every last tooth in those smiles. Ultimately, that's it. It's about the smiles, old smiles and new smiles. It's about us, all of us, our community living united because great things happen when we live united. Will you join us? Welcome back to Beyond the Badge. We thank Sergeant Todd Rogge for being on today's show and talking with us about Project Lifesaver. Remember that the Oshkosh Police Department has a newly revised website. Please go to www.oshkoshpd.com to see the new updates and user-friendly features. There you will find information on many programs, such as Project Lifesaver, which you just saw. Remember to know us before you need us. Summer is fast approaching. If you or your child are looking for a worthy program, please check out the Oshkosh YMCA Safety City Program. The program assists children ages four to six and seven to nine with being safe on many different safety topics such as fire safety, poison safety, personal safety, bike and pedestrian safety, and much, much more. Along with the safety training done by professionals, your child will receive a new bike helmet as well. If you have questions about the program, please go to the Oshkosh YMCA at oshkoshymca.org 
or you can call 920-230-8349 and ask to speak with Lisa Nething. Remember that safety begins at home. Talk with your family about being safe the whole year round. Until next time, you stay safe. Thank you.